Okay, a key concept in economics is that of specialization. In this video, we're going to learn what it is, and we're going to also learn about the advantages and disadvantages of firms and countries that decide to specialize. Right, specialization, very simply, is the concentration of a worker, of a firm, of a region, or of a country, okay, uh, who decide to produce a narrow range of goods and services. Okay, so it's when these types of people, or, or regions, or countries, decide to concentrate on producing what they're best at doing. So at the moment, I'm specialising in teaching economics. That's where my skill set lies, that's what I think I'm best at doing. So I'm specialising in economics teaching. Okay, similarly, uh, if you look at Champagne, okay, Champagne is a region in France. Okay? Well, Champagne is a region specialised in the production of Champagne the drink. Okay? Um, similarly, as an economy, the UK economy decides to specialise in the production of services. Okay? So we see lots of different types of specialisation occur in the real, real world. Different firms are obviously specialised in what they're best at doing, etc. Alright, so just concentrating on producing a narrow range of goods and services depending on what people are best at doing. But, okay, specialisation will only work, okay, countries or firms will only specialise if there is trade, okay, if there is a means of exchange. Okay? Why is that important? Because think about it, as an economy, okay, we produce services, we specialise in producing services. Well, that's only going to be good if we have some medium of actually getting in goods. In our economy, people don't only want services, they want manufactured goods too. Well, if there was nobody else, if there was nobody else producing manufactured goods, or if there was no way of getting manufactured goods, well then what good is specialising in services? All right, so we need trade to be successful. All right? So then we can specialise in what we're good at doing, and similarly the things that we're not very good at making, or things that we're not very good at doing, well we can simply import them from other countries. So through trade we can focus on what we're good at doing, because the stuff we're not good at doing, we can rely on somebody else to produce those things for us. Without trade, there'll be no way of getting the things that we're not good at doing if we're specialising. So yes, we need trade, but we also need, through this means of exchange, we need some sort of monetary transaction to take place. Okay? Now, a long time ago, centuries ago, bartering would have taken place, okay? but the problem with bartering is that we have um, a duplicate of wants problem. All right? So how can we guarantee that whatever I'm selling is what somebody else wants? Okay? This is difficult. So nowadays, money acts as the appropriate means of exchange, acts as the appropriate monetary payment. Okay, we use money. All right, but we need trade to be successful for the reason that we said before. The beauty of specialization, why people actually want to do it, is because it reduces the problem of scarcity. Okay, the economic problem we talked about on a previous video becomes less of an issue. Why? Because again, if an economy decides to specialize, well then, to specialize, they would use the factors of production available to them. They would use the scarce resources available to them. Maybe that's a workforce. Maybe that's the raw materials available, etc. Whereas if one economy had a problem of scarcity, so in the UK we can't produce bananas, for example. Okay, we just don't have the the means available for us to do that. We don't have the weather as one. We don't have the soil available for us to produce as certain types of fruit and vegetables. Therefore, we can import those. We can import those goods from other economies where they're very good at producing that, those types of fruit and vegetables. Therefore, scarcity is that's a problem in our country. We don't have to worry about bananas and, and oranges and things being scarce because we can just import those. So the actual problem of scarcity reduces as a result of specialisation. Okay, so that's very simply what it is. Let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of specialisation. Alright, so I'll do the advantages in green to start with. So why is it good to specialise? Okay, so let's do advantages. Well, first of all, very simply, there's going to be a larger range okay, of goods and services. Now that might seem odd, because in our definition, we talked about you know, firms, countries, regions, specialising on a narrow range of goods and services. Well, that's true, but if 
Lots and lots of firms did that in an economy. Lots and lots of workers did that in an economy. They produced just a small section of something. Well, all together, there'll be lots and lots of stuff produced. Okay? A great range. Take Dyson as a good example. Dyson in the UK. Okay? Specialised in the production of vacuum cleaners. But, look at the amount of products that they produce. They produce a huge range of different types of vacuum cleaners. Okay? So, lots and lots of firms do that, which they do in economies. Think about the range of goods and services in total that would be available. A very large range. That's a good thing. Okay? Secondly, in total, there'll be greater output, okay, greater total of goods and services produced, and also greater quality. Okay? So there'll be more goods and services produced, the amount of goods and services produced will be higher, and the quality of these goods and services produced will be of a very high standard too, which are all very good things. Third advantage. Okay, as economies specialise, they're going to benefit. Okay? Trade will increase. More will be exported okay, from that country as they decide to specialise in the production of something. And as a country trades more, exports more, it will grow. Okay? And as a countries grow, what happens? Living standards improve. So specialisation is a great thing for economies because people get materially richer. They get more well off as a result. Living standards um, increase, people become happier. They own more stuff, they feel more happy because they have more stuff. Okay, so through increase in trade, which we see because of specialization, countries will grow. Okay, and growth will lead to more growth. Okay, it's a very prosperous cycle, trade and growth cycle. Okay, so these are all the benefits of specialization there. But, What are the disadvantages? And the disadvantages are actually quite major. First of all, yes, overall specialisation will reduce the, the problem of scarcity, especially in one economy, through trade. But if one country, okay, or if one firm specialises so heavily in producing something that's very dependent on a specific resource, we've got problems because resources are finite. What happens if that raw material that's being used, maybe rubber, copper, whatever it might be that's used to produce that product, what if it runs out? Okay? Resources are finite. Then what happens? You specialise so much on something that then it's just gone, you're then left with nothing to produce. Okay? So finite resources exist. What if by specialising you're over reliant on good weather? So again, look at economies that specialise in the tourism sector. Okay, they're very, very reliant on good weather to bring in tourists to then bump up their economy. Well what if you have a year of bad weather, okay, or a summer which is not very good, okay, lots of rain and cold and wind, you're in trouble because you've relied too heavily on good weather to support your economy. Similarly, if you're a, a food uh, processor, let's say you grow fruit and vegetables, which again is reliant on good weather, what if you have a bad season, okay, a bad summer again? If you're too reliant on good weather through specialization, you can find yourselves in, in major problems as a result. Okay, similarly, you can have problems with changing tastes and fashions. If you're producing a product which is heavily reliant on taste and fashion, but what if fashions change? You're going to be left in the lurch. Okay, another issue is national interdependence. So, as countries specialise and as trade increases, countries become closely, more, more closely linked together, don't they? Okay? Countries become more dependent on each other. But what happens if relations between countries break down? What if there's a war in a country, which means you can't import from them? What if there are political problems with these countries, which means that trade is restricted? Okay? Or that other countries refuse to trade with you, etc. Okay, national, actually national, sorry, national interdependence there becomes a major issue, okay? becoming too reliant on other countries. 
And finally, something that we saw in Britain, So you decide to specialise, as Britain did um, via the Industrial Revolution, you decide to specialise hugely in manufactured goods, in the manufacturing sector. But what happens if, you know, in maybe five, ten years' time, another country can do it better than you can? Okay? So other countries like you know, China and other kind of European countries could produce manufacturing goods a lot cheaper okay, to maybe a higher quality as well than Britain could, in which case their specialisation was greater than ours. What happened then in the UK? Well, the UK manufacturing sector just slumped. Okay? All the factories, all the workers essentially were laid off. We had unemployed resources, unemployed labour. And that's what happens to deindustrialization. The industries that were actually brought up through special specialization then become idle, okay? become useless. And that is a massive drag on the economy, a massive cost to the economy. Okay? So the risk is by specialising, what happens? If somebody or some country can then suddenly do it better than you can, you're going to have deindustrialization occur, you're going to have unemployed resources, unemployed labour, and that's a terrible consequence for an economy. So these are all the negatives of specialization too. Alright, so now we understand what specialization is, what are the pros, what are the cons of it. Now you can evaluate if you needed to in an exam situation. See you next time. Thank you very much.